Bonefish are one of the most iconic and sought after inshore saltwater game fish for the fly and light tackle angler. It's common to see folks carrying bonefish rods in airport terminals in tropical locations worldwide. But in Hawaiian airports, you'll see fewer than expected for a destination boasting some of the largest bonefish in the world. Many of the fishing areas in Hawaii are referred to as pancake flats. They're relatively small sand flats with coral rims. Landing larger bonefish in these areas can be incredibly challenging, but Hawaii also offers a variety of easily weightable, expansive flats, where on the right tide, anglers can stalk and take shots at the bonefish of a lifetime. Despite relatively low fishing pressure, as Hawaii on the Fly Guide, Mike Hennessy explains, these fish are all but easy. I would doubt you can see more fished over eight pound tailing than anywhere else in the world. I haven't fished everywhere. I've learned from fishing these really big single bonefish and I think that's what's important for people to know is if you have a big group of tailing bonefish then you have a competitive element. When you have a single bonefish I tell people never cast out of 40 feet. The main thing is to predict where that fish is going to be with your body get up ahead of them, and then also predict where your fly is going to land. If you can predict both of those things, if you can crawl the fly on tailing fish and make it puff sand, that's going to draw the bite. And that's what makes it so exciting. You have to get it done, you have to make it happen, and you have to do everything predicted to where he thinks he scared your fly off the bottom or to move it and to actually bury itself back in the sand. So. If you pull the fly off the ground even that much, they won't eat it. I tell you what, if you learn to catch these big fish, you can catch them anywhere in the world. It's, it is the varsity fishery of bonefish. And if you do anything wrong, they give you the middle flipper and they go away. And you learn something and you just get better and better as you fail. And look how stealth we gotta go. We're even painting our hooks. I would say these big bonefish here, like the big brown trout that lives underneath their bridge in Montana, you know Waldo's there, you know how he's going to eat, but he never does. So every one of these fish is like that. So when you get a perfect setup, slight strip, you move it once, you wiggle it, you stop, and you get in his head and he accelerates over, tails on your fly, and he sucks it up and you slow pull and it go, and you watch the fly roll back out of his mouth and it's devastating because you work so hard. You can stalk these fish for 20 minutes. Hawaii's bone fishing may not be as famous as its legendary surf breaks or world-class beaches, but that makes the destination all more desirable for those looking to mix fishing with a host of other outdoor activities. Yeah, the Hawaiian lifestyle is pretty fun. Um, you know, the, the whole bone fishing thing came pretty much as a bonus. I've been here since I was a little kid. We actually used to catch bonefish on strips of hot dogs in the good old days with my dad out on the sandbar. And then we realized we could get them on fly. And um, it kind of became a, a new fishery, super exciting. And we realized that there's a lot of places here where you can actually sight fish. And I mean, that's what we love to do. I mean, sight fishing is what all, I mean, that's the ultimate of fly fishing. But this is straight up getting it done. And the neat thing is, is you get done fly fishing, you can go, my daughter just actually won the state championships in surfing just about 30 minutes ago. So we have the surfing lifestyle, and then, uh, and then we'll come out here and catch some tailors, so we're pretty lucky. People say, oh man, you must be making a great living, uh, you know, bone fishing. Said, well, it's not a great living, but it's a great lifestyle, and, and I think that's what, you know, fulfills my soul, and that's why you become a guide, I think. If you're a guide and you think you're making money, you're in the wrong sport, but we love it. Dawn breaks on Oahu in the Hawaiian Islands. Fly guides Mike Hennessy and Colin Huff are waiting pancake flats in search of some of the largest bonefish on the planet. Better known as a destination for surfers, blue water anglers, and beachgoers, Oahu offers a wide variety of bone fishing options, from wading ankle deep flats in pursuit of single tailing fish to more traditional flats boat style angling. Pressure on the fishery seems lower than in many big bonefish destinations, 
but for some reason, these fish are more challenging than most. You know, these were definitely the guide days hanging out and, and we actually had a break in trips this month. It's kind of the slow month for us, so we're having a few days where just the guides get to fish and, and we switched off polling and oh man, it, the bantering was just hilarious. Oh, you little. You have to admit that was the best catch you've ever seen. You left, that was chicken dinner. I have no idea what happened. He's right his head. Where is he? That was a perfect shot. Good, 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 good. Let it sit, let it sit. It's a puffer. You know, you can see everything that you tell your clients every day, and then to actually make it happen when you're never fishing, it's pretty funny. Not explosion, too much pressure. Right, 60 feet now, now it's going right at 50. Going a little bit left to right, straight at it. So many times, Colin, he'd get the perfect shot, pull it in, feed it to him, watch the tilt, and what does he do? Hit him. Oh, oh my oh. god, nice trout set. <laughs> Which is like, seriously, trout set? <laughs> What the? And it was super funny. And in fact, I had four shots myself. I had two eight pounders coming down the line, lay it out in front of them. What happens? There's all these little baby uh, bluefin trevellies that swim with the bonefish. They feed, you know, symbiotically together. And they'll rush over full speed because they're faster and steal your fly. And both bonefish are trying to eat your fly out of his mouth. Oh, it's like complete insanity. But it's fun. It's all, and that's what we're there for. You know, we're letting them go anyway, so who cares? You know, a lot of our flats are pancake flats, and, and when I mean pancake, I'm serious. They go from, you know, a foot deep to three feet deep, depending on the tide, to 300 feet deep, or even a thousand feet deep in some places. And they're all sand in the middle with the coral rim around it. So you hook a big one, you clear your loops, get it on your reel, and then you watch the fish. If you can give them the screws to death, I recommend it. And you know, just hammer on them. And I like to fish super light drags on my reel and use drag management with my hand. The cheetah's made for speed, but not long distance. The same with bonefish. They'll do one super fast run, especially these Hawaiian bonefish, because they are they come out of a thousand feet of water. They're ocean fish, they're super green, black stripes, they're pissed off, they're angry. They're gonna peel off 100, and the 10 pounds will pull off 200 yards a line. And the reason you don't want to stop them too much, because they're just gonna blow you everything up. <laughs> I freeze pulled it when it went around. That was a nice one too. Oh, that was a great eat though, wasn't it? Uh, well, round three. Went through three coral heads and then in the blue hole. And Colin had it, we were chasing him perfect. Good. Just didn't get lucky, didn't pop off the edge. Welcome to my world. That's what they do in Hawaii. But if he gets off the flat or hits an obstruction or you feel it rubbing on coral head, and then what you can do is you can jump out of the boat and be an athlete, which we saw Colin do yesterday, which was hilarious. And Colin's a rock star, man. If, if he feels it, he's just like out of the boat, <laughs> dives in like Superman, makes it happen. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Getting nasty. While Mike and Colin continue their quest, their good buddy and colleague, Kendrick, is battling through high winds on foot waiting a flat on the other side of the island. While the windy conditions and low light make fishing very challenging, the elements also allow him to get incredibly close to tailing fish. 